we are live again. It was my music. It was an issue. I hope you got back. <laughs> Morning. Instagram actually tells you hang on in there, we're telling people. So good morning. Ah, there we go. Sorry about that, Melissa. <laughs> My connection just dropped completely. I'll wave again at you. Hi. Thanks for joining. Let's give it a second. Kinda let people settle. I've got quite a different setup this morning, so it's going to be a bit different. That's always good. Cool. Let me send. Let's send ourselves while we wake up, people, and while we get started. We can do one or two deep breaths while we wait. Always just takes a bit of a second. Hello, plain flavored. I'm wearing your t-shirt again this morning. <laughs> Thanks for the waves. Awesome having some local brands involved, some brand owners. Maybe I should do a, um, a creator session, some brand owner sessions, or entrepreneur session actually. It's tough out here, <laughs> tough on your mental health also. It's possibly what we put in play for after Christmas, after Christmas, after you guys have the festive season craziness. Hey, Mish, how's it? And we were just talking, I was just talking about um, doing a session for and Mafis here. Mafis also a creator. Listen, guys, all of you that are in here at the moment are business owners and creators. So, hmm, hmm, maybe that's the thing. <laughs> maybe that's the next thing is that I actually have to do a session for business owners and creators because end of this year has been or this year has been rough. I'm good, thank you. Thanks for asking. I'm good. Yeah, but I think I need to do a session for entrepreneurs and business owners and brands and creators, etc. Um, because always being creative and always trying to be, you know, innovative um, will also lead to a level of fatigue. So we can do a session on that. So let's get going. So good morning and thank you for all for joining me. It's a nice little crowd this morning. Um, for those of you who haven't been here before, haven't tried my session live before, my name's Amy. I'm an occupational therapist, a mental health occupational therapist. And for about the last three, four months, actually, during lockdown, I've been doing online wellness and relaxation classes for you guys um, on a Saturday morning. I've been enjoying it. It's been going really well. I hope you've been enjoying it. I hope you found value in it. I hope it's found helped you find time for yourself. I hope it's helped you just add self-care and deep breathing and relaxation techniques to your day. And then also like this morning session is more about learning and learning a self-care also. Hey, Grafty Bee's also joining us. Hello, guys. It's a nice little crowd this morning. So this morning, what I'm going to be talking to you about, um, well, before I do this, let me add my disclaimer that while these sessions are therapeutic in nature, nature they are not therapy. They do not classify as therapy. It is this morning session especially is a learning session. I've taken chunks of content and kind of just made it simpler for you so that you don't go and have, you don't have to go read all the articles and journal articles etc on all of this. I'm trying to put it into one video for you so that it's easier to um, consume. You know, we're all consuming content at the moment. So, yeah, this morning we're talking about screen fatigue. We're talking about decision fatigue. And I'm going to talk at that a session or, or sort of put that all together and how end of year fatigue is affecting us at the moment. And they all play into each other. Um, and in my research and my reading, I thought that was so interesting that we actually have just compiled multiple layers of fatigue or of things that could actually cause fatigue. So I actually feel like our brains are on quite a bit of a hard wire at the moment, just in terms of the research I've done for the sessions and just learning about the different ways in which we are requiring our bra brains to process information at the moment. And we are requiring our brains to actually be able to be the best of themselves in this space. And it is, it is challenging for our brains, actually. It is very challenging. And let's get a little bit learning about why it's challenging. So I think before we go into that, let's actually just center ourselves, help me center myself. So we're going to do just a short deep breathing session. Um, I am going to teach you an energizing one, which believe it or not, actually really helped me this morning. So I'm so glad I was able to find one that actually 
it really helps energize you. Um, I'm not saying it's going to energize you for a full day, but it's going to energize you for the next part of your day. But I want to start with a grounding one. So we're going to do five, five, five. Okay, so we've done this one quite often. I'm only going to do two. And it's really just to center yourself in the space, ground yourself in the space so that we are more open to learning and we are more open to understanding how what I speak to you about, when I speak to you about, I wanted you to apply it to your own life. So when I speak to you about screen fatigue, consider how often you sit in front of the screen. When I speak to you about end of year fatigue and all the things that are building up, consider how that impacts your life or where it connects to your life so that we, the session then becomes really helpful for your life. We're all different. Um, this is all going to affect us differently um, depending on multiple reasons. But I want you to try and apply it to your life as, as much as you can. So let's do a nice deep exhale. <sighs> Everything you've been holding on to for the week. Nice big deep breath in. And exhale through your mouth. <sighs> as long as you can. Nice deep breath in again. As Try and get your stomach to sort of go as, as wide, expand it as much as you can. So inhale and let your belly expand. Exhale and try and just get everything out. Now I want you to inhale for the count of five. You're going to hold for five and we're going to exhale for five. So inhale for the count of five. One, two, three, four, five. We're going to hold it there for five. One, two two, three, four, five, and you're going to exhale for five. Through your mouth, two, three, four, five. Let's do one more. Inhale for five, two, three, four, five. Hold it there for five, two, three, four, five, and exhale, two, three, four, Great, great. I hope you're feeling a lot more grounded. Let's learn. Let's learn. So the first one I want to start with today is screen fatigue. And I think I want to start with it because it's something that all of us are doing. At the moment, you are looking at the screen. At the moment, I'm talking to a screen and all of you. And our days have become structured around screens. Whether or not we choose it, many of us have our days structured around screens. So what we're doing in terms of screens is not just our phone. But you could find that you're actually having your laptop in front of you and a phone and you're working simultaneously between it. And then even when you're done with work and you're actually just wanting to settle for the evening or have a space of relaxation, you might be watching TV or watching something on a laptop. So again, you're actively looking at a screen. Now, screen fatigue is very much focused on your eyes and on sort of the ocular space of, of managing fatigue. And what screen fatigue actually has shown us is that staring at a screen or looking at a screen for a prolonged period of time, it really actually makes your eyes fatigued. It makes your eyes a little tired. So could you, you possibly sense that in the space of your eyes feeling a little dry, more dry than, than normal. You might feel that actually after looking at a screen for a while, your eyes start blurring a little bit or your vision starts to blur a little bit. Hello, I'll wave back at you. Your vision starts to blur a little, a little bit. You might also find that when you're not looking at a screen, when you're looking at something else, your eyes feel tired. Um, it might feel tired it's almost in the corner of your eyes over here, and it might feel tired on the other corners as well. In our reality, or our reality at the moment, is actually that many of us are working from home. Many of us are on our phones quite often, and you might need your phone for business. We've got a lot of business owners in the session this morning. So you might be using your phone for business, your laptop for work use or personal use, or whether it's your side hustle or whatever you've got going on. A lot of the times, many of our business are being run online at the moment. Online or screens is also how we are connecting with family and friends at the moment. So you want to be able to make that phone call, have that WhatsApp chat, even have that Zoom conversation or video call. You want to be able to do it, but we need to protect our eyes and our body in the time frame of it or while we are doing this. So let's look at some ways you can protect your eyes. Firstly, stay hydrated. So if you're feeling like your eyes are a little dry, like I'm actually feeling my eyes are really dry this morning. I've had a long week of screen time, a long week of screen time. I've had daily sessions of screen time um, because I've been working on quite a big project at the moment. And then um, 
I've also been doing research for this. I've got businesses on the side. So I, I do spend a lot of time on my phone. Hello, Quentin, all the way from Australia. That's fantastic. Hi. Um, so I have been spending a lot of time on my screen and on my phone at the moment. And I do actually feel it in my eyes. I can feel my eyes are tired. Um, I can feel I've got like these dark circles under my eyes. I can feel that my eyes are a little dry and that when I look at something else, I almost feel like my vision starts to blur. Now, I've been wondering quite a bit, should I be going for an eye test? Because also, yeah, I'm getting older. I should probably go for an eye test. I should possibly need glasses. There is genetically, I should possibly need glasses as well. I kind of feel like I know I'm going to get there at some stage. Um, but I actually then realized when testing it on just, you know, these reading glasses situations, it's not that. It's not my vision. It's the fact that my, my eyes are tired. My ocular space is tired and it is dehydrated. So how do we fix this? <laughs> we drink more water. We take more regular breaks for our eyes. And what we also need to do when we're taking breaks for our eyes. So if you're finding that you're at your computer and you're working and you're working or you're looking at your phone, what you should be trying to do is as often as possible, and even if you set an alarm for yourself with your phone, that every 20 minutes you actually look up and you look at something in a distance because we're constantly looking here. Or we're constantly looking here. Our eyes, our visual span needs to expand a little further at times also. So find something else that you can look at, that you can extend and look at that for a couple of minutes, blink your eyes and stay hydrated throughout this program. Hydration and fatigue are so closely linked. If your body is dehydrated, you're going to feel tired all the time and just like that. And often what you need for your fatigue is a really nice little glass of water. So while we're still, and especially at this time when we're working on, on the end of year fatigue, try and get your, your amount of water that you require for your body daily. And remember, water comes in different forms. It's not just about drinking water. Are you eating, eating enough fruit and vegetables that have a high water content? That's another way to get your water in. Um, could you make smoothies with ice in the morning? Um, are you doing herbal teas? Could you make a jug of herbal iced tea? Some Anything that gets that liquid and that water into, into your body. I fully agree with you, Mish. You get so tired of screen fatigue where you don't want to respond to non-work related messages. It's really bad. And that is a combination of not particularly just screen, but some of the other fatigue syndromes I'm going to be talking to you about right now. And that is very much end of year. It feels like, unless I have to, I actually don't want to. And I've also find myself just leaving my phone. We're so used to having it with us all the time, but leave it. You know, like if you've got, if you know you've, you've ticked off everything that needs to be done for the day, take some screen time, to take some time away from screen time. I find it so interesting that in a lot of the spaces that we're working at the moment, or a lot of the spaces that we're talking about, we're talking about screen time for kids. Kids shouldn't have enough, shouldn't have that much screen time. But what about us? <laughs> you know, as adults, our brains are also not created to consistently look at the screen and consume information. Our brains need a break. So screen time is also causing quite a bit of your fatigue because you're not just looking at a screen and watching something. You're consuming information. Your brain is creating those connections between those, um, those neurons that are sort of telling you where that information needs to be stored. So even though we're thinking that we are taking a break and resting and resting in terms of not looking at a screen or not doing work, Simply because we're watching something, our brain is not resting. So I want to encourage you to, A, take breaks for your eyes, stay dehydrated, take some screen time or time away from your screen. And those screens include your laptop, your cell phone, your TV, when you're playing PlayStation, any of those things, find what works for you so that you can give your eyes and your brain a break. And now I also want to talk about your body in this position. I want you to imagine when you're looking at your phone and what your neck is doing and what your shoulders are doing. So let's just, let's use my, oh, I've got my cell phone cover. Actually, I have my cell phone cover. What am I doing? I'm constantly doing that and screening. My neck is in a constant position of looking down. We are in danger of shortening this muscle because the way our bodies work is that if we continuously put our bodies in a certain space or a certain position over time without counteracting that, the muscle actually adapts to that position. The muscle will shorten. It's what we call shorten in, in therapy terms. Um, 
The same would happen in, um, I work with a lot of kids with disabilities who can't particularly move their bodies themselves. It's that level of disability. And unless we work with them and do the therapy with them um, and move the muscles for them, their bodies will actually what, do what we call contract in that position. So a lot of our kids have the tone in their arm, causes their arm to twist and pull without regular exercise to actually release that and to um, actively move that joint, that joint will actually get fixed in that position. Now we don't have, hey Vizio, thank you. <laughs> we don't have that kind of tone. Most of us, many of us, it's, it's a broad statement, it's a broad statement, but in general, if you do not have that type of tone pulling your muscle, but you consistently put your body in a position that creates that, that muscle in that position. So you're consistently looking down, you're shortening this muscle, you're also, if just if you feel it, if you try it and you feel it, and you pay attention to your body in this position. I'm actually noticing that I feel it in my lower back, I feel it in my upper back, my shoulders, my arms, my thumbs have been hurting this week. <laughs> Granted, I have been playing a lot of um, retro games, but I noticed my fat thumbs have been hurting and my joints. And that's because I've been putting it, my body in this position and I'm looking at a screen and I'm looking down at a screen or I'm looking at a screen and play. But you need to counteract the positions that you put your body in. So if you're used to sit, looking at a screen at a laptop and this is your position, you need to be twisting. You need to be, it's called mobility. Let's look at mobility. You need to ensure that your joints get the opposite mobility, if that makes sense. Listen, um, Andrea on um, AOC Physiotherapist, please add in. And if you want to do a session together, Andrea, on how we can counteract this, girl, you, Andrea and I study together. Like, get into the DMs and we can plan that session so that we can show people physically the type of exercises that you need to be doing in order to counteract the shortening of this muscle in your neck, right? Short term, make sure you look up. Make sure you twist your head and your neck around a little bit. Rotate it if you need to. Any form of movement, our bodies need the opposite movement. So whenever you find that you are doing something with one muscle, try and do it with the other muscle. So the same thing with an arm. We're never just going to move one arm. You have to kind of act and balance it. So we need to balance our necks also by looking up. So... If you what you can do throughout your day is you can schedule sessions and use your phone for good then set an alarm that every 20 to 30 minutes you're going to take a break you're going to do some mobility you're going to look at things that are a little bit further and put things that you like in that position so if there's a really pretty picture or fo fo um, photo or painting that you like put it at least two meters away from you so you need to get we need to get our eyes to go from the short distance to that distance Put it two meters away from you so that you know every 20 to 30 minutes you're going to look at that picture. You're going to look a little bit further in whatever room you're using. You're going to do the exercises where you counteract the strain on your neck and your shoulders. And that friends is screen time. <laughs> or screen fatigue. And that's just one of the fatigues that we have at the moment. That's actually a lot more body fatigue than mental fatigue. But it all is connected. Our bodies are so amazing that they are just connected in multiple ways. But that is your connection of your physical body being tired from spending so much time in front of a screen. The next thing I want to talk to you about is decision fatigue. And this is, of course, something that's very interesting to me. <laughs> um, I really enjoy reading about decision fatigue. Um, I can, when I do my post, I will reference the psychologist who sort of claimed the phrase. Um, and What's interesting about decision fatigue is that it's the concept that if we are constantly making decisions, big decisions, it really limits our brain capacity to make better decisions later on. I'm going to give you an example of this because it's so much easier to understand with an example. So let's just say you've got an average working day and you, um, let's just say you're a parent because I know there are a lot of parents in this session. So in the morning you're waking up and you need to get your kids to school, but let's just say your kids don't have uniforms. So you need to decide what they're going to wear. You need to decide what you're going to wear. You need to decide what are they going to have for breakfast? What are you going to have for breakfast? Are people taking lunch to school? Are you taking lunch to work? Chances are you're not because you've made so many decisions already that you're not making yourself a priority in terms of what you're going to eat today. Then you have to drive to work if you are driving. When you're driving to work, you have to decide on the route you're going to take. You have to decide on um, what time are you leaving? Is it going to be? And then you have to manage traffic, which is a lot of me decisions all the time. 
even if you're working from home, it's a matter of if you don't have a set space where you're working from home, it's a matter of where am I going to be positioned, um, what time am I going to log in, we are constantly making these small decisions throughout the day. Then work happens, and because we prioritize our decisions and our brain capacity at work, we make bigger decisions in meetings and throughout the day. So regardless of your type of work that you do, you are constantly making decisions. You could be, um, again, we have a lot of business owners in this, in this session. So you're not just making decisions for your day job. A lot of you have side hustles. I see it. I see a lot of the people in here. But you're also making decisions for your own personal business. Absolutely nothing wrong with any of that. Throughout the day, you consistently make these decisions. So let's just say you come out of two really big meetings where you had to talk about budgets or you had to talk about plans. And especially this time of the year, many of us are planning for 2021, which is such a hard space to do from a person who plans. I plan a full year of training in my day job and I can't at the moment because I have no idea what we're going back to after after December holidays. Um, so let me just plug my phone in here for a second. I have no idea what we're going back to. So this entire decision process becomes very difficult for me. It is very challenging at the moment, but I have to do it. So you've going through a full day of work of making decisions, of making decisions for yourself, for others, for your family. And none of that, there's nothing wrong with any of that. But you might find that because you've been doing this for so long, and we're in November already. You've been making decisions daily for so long and in the same routine for so long. That when it comes to what are we going to have for dinner, the easiest option, because you can't face another decision. What's in the freezer? Goes in the oven. Fried chips, fried fish, whatever. Um, or Uber Eats. You click, open the app and you order something. Or on your way home, you go through the drive through Because that allows you to not make more decisions. Now, you could have had best intentions this week, that day. Your intention for the week could have been that you're going to eat better, that you're going to make full meals for your family, that you're going to, you know, you could have prepped yourself completely for that. You could have all the ingredients you need. You could actually even have a meal plan. You could have the best of intentions. But what decision fatigue tells us is that despite that, you're still, your brain is still not particularly going to have the capacity to make that decision. Your brain is going to go, I can't. Go to McDonald's. I can't. There's ice cream in the freezer. That's what we're having for supper. Or I can't. We're just going to put peanut butter on bread. None of this. Nothing wrong with any of these things or any of these ideas as meals. But what I'm trying to get across is that you could have made other decisions. You could have set intentions for that week that you wanted to do anything, something better. And then decision fatigue kind of goes against the saying of when we know better, we do better. I struggle with that because very often I do know better. <laughs> I totally know better in terms of what we should be eating, in terms of when I should be exercising. I totally know better. But I get to a point in, in late afternoons, especially around after three-ish during the day, where I'm going, I just, no. I'm going to stop at Woolworths on the way home and buy something simple to put on, to put on the, you know, it's... I experienced so much this week. I felt broken. I couldn't think making dinner was the, making dinner in the last two weeks, guys, has been exhausting. And, you know, I don't want to put this on, on you in terms of share the load, in terms of somebody else should do it. And I know a lot of you are moms here or moms generally, we take that on. Women generally, we take that on as in like we manage the household space of of meals, etc. You don't have to. I mean, you could. Sh we should be sharing the load. But even when you're sharing the load, you're driving the process very often. It doesn't work like that in all households. But very often, we think we need to. Maybe when we change that, we think we need to drive the process. And you actually don't need to drive the process. And yeah, Melissa is saying, yeah, and we make this, we took this as the norm. We do. We think that we should be absolutely exhausted at the end of the day and our brains cannot make any more decisions. But what about those important decisions that, that need to happen in the evening? What about the decisions of um, how, you, how you spend your family time? Because what comes along with decision fatigue is irritability, is frustration. Um, your child could bring something to you where the teachers told you, look, you need to come to a meeting on Monday or Tuesday, and you're going, I can't actually decide when I need to do that. Because now I have to go through my entire schedule in my brain <laughs> just to figure out what I need to do that. You could have a kid's birthday party this weekend and you're going, I don't, I don't know what we need to buy this kid as a gift. What is this? Why do I need to do this again? 
Christmas is coming up and many of us are thinking about we need to, there's the gifting space, there's the planning holiday space, there's the planning meals. It's a lot that we put ourselves into and many of, my, a lot of this is what we're planning in the evenings. It's not part of our day jobs. We're planning these things in the evenings and actually our brains are saying, I don't want to make those decisions. I don't have the capacity. Now, what's interesting with decision fatigue is it's also about the capacity of your brain, not particularly just the emotional side, but your brain's capacity. And when I say that, I mean as in your brain actually just can't take on it. It can't make those decisions. It's just not able to, to, it doesn't have the clarity required to make decisions. And this is why putting things in place to limit decision fatigue is important for us. So let me give you some ideas for this, because I feel like I'm talking a lot this morning, I'm going on very really long. But let me give you some ideas for this. So how do we counteract decision fatigue? We plan. And I know that I'm just telling you about how difficult it is. But we plan to not make decisions. So in researching this and in, in researching quite a few of the bigger brains in the world, let's call them that, or kind of the well-known people in the world, the, the richest people in the world, um, Zuckerberg, Obama, um, Steve Jobs, all of them wore the exact same thing every day. And someone like so Zuckerberg, Mark Zuckerberg, owner of Facebook or Facebook CEO, he wears the same gray t-shirt and jeans every single day. If you Google it, you'll find pictures of his closet where you'll just see gray t-shirts and I don't know what color jeans it is, but that's not the point. Obama um, mentions in, in interviews, etc., that he either wears a blue suit or a black suit and that's all he has. Um, Steve Jobs, whenever you see pictures of Steve Jobs, is in his black um, turtleneck, polonic thing, and, and jeans. They do this because they don't want to use that brain capacity to decide on what to wear. Now, many of us actually, what we wear is the only time we actually get to be a little bit more creative. We quite enjoy putting things together. We quite enjoy wearing the clothes that we have. So I'm not saying only wear the same thing every day. <laughs> But I'm saying that type of thinking can assist you with decision fatigue. So you could put that type of thinking into multiple spaces. You could put that type of thinking into Monday nights we have this. That's dinner on a Monday night. If Monday night is leftovers um, from Sunday and you know that you're spending time on Sunday cooking and preparing meals. And I know you don't want to spend all your time cooking and preparing meals. But if you have one or two meals prepared and you know that they are meals that you are, that you are prepared for or that you are okay to have in the week. That's two times that you don't have to make decisions, right? I agree with you, dressing can be very stressful. Plan your outfits. And I know that also sounds difficult. I've tried it, but then I just get so tired of it also. But I have tried planning X amount of outfits for the week, having them ready, having them if they need to be ironed, etc. If you're still on that ironing trip, I know a lot of people have let go of the ironing trip. But if you're still on the ironing trip, having them prepared so that you could actually just grab something. We put a lot of emphasis into our mood, in terms of when we're getting dressed, which is fine, but give yourself less options. So that you're not actually looking at this pile of clothing and trying to decide what you want to wear. So add things into your week that you plan and structure for. This is why, yeah, yeah that's how Angie and her team have a uniform. Absolutely. Do you need it? Do you want a uniform? There's no reason you can't have a uniform, even if you've got a day job that doesn't require it. There's no reason that you can't say, listen, I'm going to wear the same pants and shirt every day. I'm going to buy them in three colors if I want to. I'm going to have it prepared, but I'm not going to use the brain capacity to decide on what I wear. I'm going to use my brain capacity rather to decide on how I take the neck, on how I plan dinner for this evening or how I plan a evening or a family session this weekend. I'm going to keep my brain capacity in decision making for that as opposed to for what I wear. Same thing can go for how are you driving? I'm only going to drive this route. I'm never going to change my route. Um, what are you, um, when are you exercising? I'm going to exercise at six o'clock every morning or I'm going to exercise at four o'clock every day. I've already planned what I'm going to do in terms of exercise. I don't have to sit down and go, oh, what's going to happen now? I've decided. I've pre-made those decisions. So as far as possible when it comes to decision fatigue, try and, and pre plan as much as you can so that you don't have to make more decisions. The other option is to share the load. Share the load. Have conversations with people in your life that actually, I, I, my, my plate is just too full at the moment. Can you take dinner this week? Can you take dinner for three nights a week? Share it with your partner, whoever else is in your household. Create a plan that you know you don't have 
Tuesdays and Thursdays to think about it. It makes a huge difference. <laughs> I've tried this with my husband and I started with, can you just take Tuesdays? Tuesdays are my hardest day in the week. Figure out what's your hardest day in the week for you. We're all different. Mondays are not great for everybody. Some people love Mondays. That's fine. But I feel like each of us have a day in the week that just makes us go, oh. and Tuesdays are my day like that. So he does dinner on a Tuesday or we share the load with dinner. We decide together what we're going to have. Um, or we, we specifically make bigger meals and that we can have over time because then whether it's sandwiches or just using something that, so we, we have a business where we smoke products. You can check that out, but we also have a smoker and it's, it actually really saves a lot of energy and time because we can smoke one thing and eat of it for a couple of days. You could do the same with your oven. You can roast one chicken or you can roast something that you can slice for the rest of the week. It means your lunch is sorted. It means your meals are sorted. It means you don't have to make those plans. So that, friends, is decision fatigue. And remembering then also to not be so hard on yourself when you have the best of intentions, but you choose otherwise when faced with it. So you have the best intentions for great meals by you buy McDonald's on the way home because you can't face another decision. It's fine. Don't be so hard on yourself about it. We're all allowed to make these choices as much as possible. Prevent it. If you can't prevent it, don't be so hard on yourself about it. Let it go. Um, I want to read some comments. My day job doesn't require it. Good. My problem, I plan in my head, but when it comes to the next day, I can't even wake up on time because I'm so tired. Absolutely. And I think, Melissa, that is a great, Melissa from Millie Pops, I think that is a great way to lead into end of year fatigue. The end of year fatigue happens for most people around this time, November, December. And it happens because we have been in the same routine for a couple of months now, or for about 10 months once it gets to November. And you've been making the same decisions You've been going through the same routine. You've been scared, staring at the screen. Last week we spoke about fatigue in general and what it actually does to your body. And most of what is, all of these things are saying is that if we consistently do the same thing over time, it wears us down, it tires us out. Whether it's decision making, whether it's using the screen. Um, last week I spoke about chronic fatigue in terms of emotional chronic fatigue. I spoke about the mental weight of fatigue and just constantly having to think about something. We are not designed for this. We are not designed to keep going without a break. We are not designed to just keep pushing. Um, and, and you know, like, some, like Melissa was saying earlier, we've been taught that it's the norm. We're actually not designed for this. We, are, we have created a society where being busy and being stressed is what we want. Um, or is seen as sort of the ideal, oh, I'm so busy, I'm so stressed out at the moment. You're not excited about being stressed out. Let's be honest about it. None of us are excited about being stressed out. When you have moments of you're like, oh, I'm not stressed right now. You know it's because actually that's, that's where you want to be. And when this happens and it compiles over a period of time, like a full year, by November and December, you are exhausted. Your brain is tired. Your body is tired. And your body has been going through the same routine. Um, your sleep is not great and I'm going to bring in COVID and 2020 in general here now because already end of year fatigue has been, it's been something we've known about. It's not a 2020 situation. You, if you think back to November 2019, you were tired. If you think back to November 2018, end of year fatigue already had you. 2020 has been a different year. You've been carrying so much this year in terms of emotions, in terms of stress, in terms of anxiety. There's been quite a bit in 2020. So I really just want to start this with saying, please don't feel bad for being fatigued right now. Please don't feel bad for end of year fatigue. Take the time to look after yourself. Take the time to, like Crafty B is saying, it's about your mindset. What do you feed your mind? What are you consuming? I'm totally going to do a video on consuming in terms of on the internet and how you manage that. What are you feeding your brain? What are you consuming? What are you allowing yourself to see it and do at the moment? So some ways that we can manage end of year fatigue. Um, I note this down. Tips in general. Because that is, in essence, end of your fatigue. There's a matter of we've had a build-up of stress, a build-up of activity, a build-up of the same movement, and now our bodies are going, I'm so tired. <laughs> and it's, you know that, that fatigue is not a 
type of tired that you're going to go for a nap or rest and you're going to come back, okay? Fatigue is the type of tired where you wake up and you're tired. You go to sleep and you're tired. You take that nap and you wake up and you're still tired. That is fatigue. And there are certain things that are only going to fit, um, that are going to fix that. And rest is one of them. And there are multiple types of rest. I've got a video on it. You can check that out. There are different types of rest. that You can find one that suits you. But let's also talk about how we how we counteract this and how we look after ourselves for the rest of this year. The first thing I want to consider, I want you to consider is creating a self-care schedule. So scheduling time for yourself. Scheduling time in your day for 10 minutes of deep breathing, 20 minutes of alone time. You know, time when somebody's just not, nobody's expecting anything of you. Even if it means you must sit in your car. <laughs> Even if it means you must sit in your car before you come into your home. It would make such a big difference if you sat in your car, did some deep breathing, just de-stressed and left the day, the stress of the day in your car when you got home. You'll see the difference it makes in your family life. You'll see the difference it makes in your decision making. It's, it, it really does. It's so important to take some time for yourself. And at the end of your work day, before you come into your family space, is a really good time for this. Set boundaries, friends. Set boundaries. Especially this time of the year, people are wanting to want to add on and add on, and you need to learn to say no. There's no is not a dirty word. There's nothing wrong with saying no, and you there's nothing wrong with doing it very politely and very, in a very caring way that makes someone go. Actually, it's it's about saying that I don't have the capacity for that right now. I my I can't I don't have I can't give you the mental load that requires. And when that comes to time or it comes to decisions, even saying I don't have the capacity to make that decision right now. It's valid. It's fair. Especially when we've got big decisions to make. Put it off for a little bit. You know, ask tell someone if they're asking you for a question, a massive question at um, at four o'clock in the afternoon. And you actually know I'm not going to make a clear decision about that because I've been making decisions all day. Ask them if you can move that to tomorrow morning. In the sentence of, I actually can't help you with that right now. Can we do it nine o'clock tomorrow morning? Earlier is better for me. And don't think about it all night. Don't do that to yourself. <laughs> Come back at it the next morning and go, okay, these are the decisions somebody needs me to make. But you're actually going to make better decisions earlier in the morning. When it comes to decision fatigue also, if you've got big meetings coming up in the next couple of weeks, schedule them for the morning, for when you actually have capacity to make those decisions and make better decisions. So that, you know, later on, it doesn't nag you. It doesn't make you go, oh, I should have said that and I should have said that. Because you don't need that anxiety right now. If you set the boundary, if you say no, if you respond to people honestly and politely in terms of this is what I need and this is where I am at. It's not that you, you're not wanting to be um, involved or engaged with somebody. It's just telling somebody, I can't give you the best of myself right now. Give me, give me time and I will give you the best of myself. But I also need to acknowledge that I can't always do that. Um, I just spoke about earlier with decision fatigue. Prep and plan as far as possible. I'm not a good prep and planner. Like I do it every now and then. But I do also let it go because I've got so many other decisions I'm making. But when you find the time, try and prep and plan as much as you can. Are you having smoothies this week? Great. Freeze those in bags so that you can just take it out, put it in yogurt or whatever you're making. Put it in the blender and you're done. You don't have to go, oh, what's going to go in the smoothie? You've prepped it already. Um, when it comes to what your kids are wearing, plan the clothes for the week if you need to. Or give them the opportunity to make some of the decisions. And I know you don't want your kids walking around in all their tutu skirts and all of those things. But I actually watched a really cool video this week of give them two options. Children need to learn to make choices. They want to make choices. Take the stress out of yourself. Leave three t-shirts available. Two or three t-shirts, depending on your child's age. Do more research about that. But children can make choices. Leave those two pairs of shorts and those two t-shirts there and see how they match them up. Give them a smaller amount of things to make decisions about and they can do it. Share the load with your kids also. Um, now I want to add something else. Do something different in your schedule, especially with end of year fatigue. When was the last time you did something for the first time? I really love that line because it so often makes me go, when was the last time? Because we get so used to a routine. But when you give your brain a change in that routine, it actually will energize you. You'll find that you are in such a better mood because your brain, you and your brain are going, wow, that was a really great idea. And that doesn't have to be something over the top like going on a holiday or you know going out somewhere expensive. That could be something as simple as going, 
I'm going to have a shower in the middle of the day. It's different. I'm going to have a cold shower in the middle of the day. Um, I'm going to slice up some cucumber and put it on my eyes because I've been staring at the screen and my eyes are really tired and sore and then I dehydrated. Um, it's something different in your day. If you want to do it for your family, you'll see the change in them as well. So maybe you need to start your morning at the beach. If you're working from home, it's possible. You can be on the beach at six and back home possibly in time for you to start your day. It's, it's possible, but find something that is something you haven't done either in a long time or something you haven't done um, ever. <laughs> and that could also be something as simple as trying a new recipe. You know, you don't need to make the same food all the time. You can Google. There's a great website, actually, where you can Google and put in all the ingredients you have in your house and it will spit out just different types of recipes. Um, another one is called Yamli, but there's quite a few at the moment. You could Google that also. And that... That difference in your day will actually really change the connections that your brain is making. You want your brain to make new connections. Your sensory system is also fantastic for that. So maybe you need a body scrub while you're in the shower. Add these things into your day so that you're not making it a full on space of self-care, but you're adding self-care throughout your day. So you're splitting it into those parts. Do something different. Change your routine. It's not easy saying no when you're in business. Ah, oh, we operate at a high level where the buck stops with you. So delegating is not always possible. How do you say no with a disclaimer? I love that question. And I think also so important because we have so many business owners in the session this morning. And yes, I agree with you. The buck stops with you. You know, if, if a client is asking you for something and you don't particularly have it ready or you know they want it sooner than you're going to have it ready. You're, you're worried about losing that sale or about losing that client. But people are actually a lot more people driven and people focused at the moment. And you can and you can say no in a very polite way without being overly rude and maybe just giving them another plan. I often say no with a plan as in I don't have capacity for that at the moment, but I will actually be able to do that for you on Friday. Could you give me a couple of more days? I also, I come from a space in my businesses as well that I want to give you the best of me. So I will come from a space of, look, my goal here is to give you the best in terms of, thank you so much. <laughs> my goal is to give you the best of me as often as I, as I can. And right now I am not at my best. But I can be if you give me a couple of days, if you give me a couple of days to put that in process. I also want to come at that from a space of, can we be kinder to each other? <laughs> can we be easier on each other? We are so, we're all pushing the space of, we need to get things done, done, done. But for who? <laughs> Why? What is going on that we all need to get things done so fast? And I really feel like COVID has absolutely shown us this with lockdown. Everything can stop. Everything can pause. And it's not going to be the end of anything for all of us. And I know many people lost their businesses and their livelihoods in the COVID space. But I'm specifically referring this to the thing of we need to be doing now, now, now. We can pause it. We can slow down. There isn't a timeline by which everything needs to be completed. We can slow down and be kinder to ourselves and be kinder to others. I put up some more videos on how we can say no, because I did notice that there's a lot of you that are really struggling with the boundary space of how to say no, and how to say no and keep your clients, how to say no and not damage friendships, how to say no and not damage relationships in general. I will put out more videos on how you can set boundaries and plan another class for that. Now, I'm very aware that I've been talking for a while. <laughs> So I think to end this session, what I want to do is an energizing breath work with you. Now, this breath work is something like I've told you in the beginning of the session. I've tried it and actually really energized me this morning. It is something you can do throughout your day. I would encourage you to do it multiple times, not just once in your day. Remember when we speak about breath work, the more you do it, the more you practice it, the easier it becomes and the better impact it has on your brain and on your body. So the breath work I'm going to do with you now is actually to regulate your oxygen flow, which will make you more alert and give you more clarity. And this one is specifically I want you to consider when you, because of decision fatigue, because of screen fatigue and because of end of year fatigue. 
All of these things are things that we can't stop doing. We can't stop making decisions. We can't stop looking at our screens. We can't stop the fact that it's end of the year and we've had all of this throughout the year. It is, it's one of those things that it is our reality. So what we need to be doing is taking small moments throughout our days and take it day by day. Take it day by day. We've got two months left of 2020. <laughs> Let's just take it day by day and not go too far forward in the future or worrying about too many things in the future. Something could happen tomorrow that changes everything. We could go back into lockdown. We could go back into lockdown that changes everything. So we don't have to think that far in the future. Let's focus on what we can do now and focus on mindfulness in the moment so that we can get clarity, so that we can do better, make better choices going forward. So let's do this exercise. Now, again, this regulates your oxygen flow. What you're going to do is inhale for two, a count of two, and we're going to increase how we exhale to the count of five. So we're going to go inhale for two, exhale for two, inhale for two, exhale for three, inhale for two, exhale for four, and inhale for two, and exhale for five. I'm going to use my hand in this so that you can do it also so that it becomes incredibly practical for you. Things, it's easier to add things into our lives when we know how to do them practically. So, wherever you are right now, let's get nice and centered. If you're sitting, try and keep your feet flat on the floor. If you're sitting with your legs crossed, that's also okay. If you're laying down, try to uncross your legs and try to keep your palms up. But be as comfortable as you can. Now, this is something you can do at your desk. It's something you can do while you're driving, whatever you need when you need more clarity and you need to actually just be a little bit more focused and energized for the rest of the day. So it should be helpful if you're feeling a little tired this morning. Um, thank you. I also love occupational therapy. Oh, thank you so much, Josephine. I didn't even know your name is Josephine, but that's lovely to meet you. Thank you. So Josephine is also an occupational therapist, so she's also doing some mental health stuff, so you could go check our page out also. So let's do this breath work, okay? Wherever you are, try and expel all the air from your lungs at first, okay? So let's just take a nice deep breath in. And exhale. Let's go again. Nice deep breath in. And really try and empty your lungs. Exhale for as long as you need to. And let's go with the two. So let's inhale for two. Exhale for two. Inhale for two again. Two. Exhale for three. One, two, three. Inhale for two. Exhale for four. Two, three, four. Inhale for two. Exhale for five. And you're going to do that three times. Let's do another one together. Inhale for two. Exhale for two. Inhale for two. Exhale for three. Inhale for two. Exhale for four. Inhale for two. Exhale for five. Last one. Let's go. Inhale for two. Exhale for two. Inhale for three. I'm sorry, for two. Exhale for three. Inhale for two. Exhale for four. Inhale for two. Exhale for five. Now allow your body to just go back to its normal breathing. Another one. And fully exhale. Now you should be feeling a little bit energized, a lot more alert. And as you continue breathing just normally, you'll regulate the oxygen flow to your brain and you'll regulate the oxygen flow in your blood around your body and it will help you feel a little bit more energized for the rest of the day. Now, uh, I do think I have been talking for a very long time. <laughs> I want to thank you if you stayed for the full session. I really hope you found it helpful. Um, if you do, then pop a message when I post this video, like tag your friends in it, let them know about it, share it in your stories. Um, 
let's help each other out. Everybody's feeling this way. End of year fatigue. I don't think I've spoken to anybody who doesn't feel this way. And if you're on social media, you've seen loads of people post about it. It is definitely something that many, many people are feeling at the moment. And that is okay. And there are things that we can do to add to it. We might not be able to take it away. There is no magic pill to take it away. But there are some things we can do throughout our day and throughout our planning and our week that can help us out. I hope you have a really beautiful day. It is a gorgeous day if you are in Cape Town. Go and do the something again for the first time. Think about it. Whether it be making ice lollies or making cocktails or whatever you feel you need to do, try and do something this weekend that you don't normally do. Add something different to your schedule and watch it energize you for the week. Watch it just give you a little bit more clarity and come back to this breathing session whenever you need to. So lots of tips today. Rewatch the video if you need to. Share it with your friends. Maybe I'll break them down into little pieces that we can share as well. And I'll share more information on this throughout the week. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day.